Hello guys and welcome to a new Wargame video today by me Vulcan and Val. Hello, hello, hello and welcome to another cast of the week. <laughs> today we're going to be casting another of the 1v1 Reddit Open Tournament games from round two of the tournament. And in this one we're going to be seeing Dr. Dave Davey, also known as Captains, facing up against Putin. And it's said to be quite a, quite a good game. So uh, what sort of decks are we looking at today, Val? So we've got kind of the big two, really. We've got, um, well, the big two DLC, at least. We've got Israel on uh, in Delta for um, Captains or Dave. And um, we've got Entente for Putin in Echo. And um, I'm sure everyone who plays World Game knows that these have been some, maybe a little controversial with how strong they were at launch, some of these uh, DLC nations, but uh, very, very good. And I'm expecting to see some really crazy fights around Bravo in this one. Yeah, so we're on the map uh, Paddy Field. Um, how do you think uh, that will affect the play going into this? It's kind of an interesting one because both decks are so good in forests. Maybe, maybe they might, or one one of the players might just give up Bravo, for example, and go for like a Fox Trot push if it's Captains, or you know maybe a push into Golf if you're uh, Putin, because it's going to be, you know, you've got the Macava two A's and all the cheap infantry and the the Bard Lass and the Zeldas in Delta. And then you've got, you know, we, we saw in the last game um, just how good those um, OTs were, I think. Yeah, yeah, the OT60 MPBs or whatever they are, um, with yeah. the two recoilless rifles, incredibly strong for pushing through the forest there. But at the same time, you do have the, the, the incredible armoured APCs out of the Israeli side. Uh, so you got the like Zeldas, um, they're the sort of um, M113s with multiple machine guns are actually really good at suppressing enemy infantry. And then you've got, um, what other things are there? Uh, the Xarets with the really high armor. They just like mow down infantry and take at least like two shots from AT weapons to the kill. And that can be really quite annoying to deal with and uh, can be quite a cost, uh, cost efficient for the Israeli side of things. Captains is a man after my own heart. He's deploying some HVMSs, which... They're not really that popular, but I really like them. They're little, um, I'd say they're only good at one thing. They can't hit infantry because they have no HE value, but they're the ultimate anti, like, APC recon. Because they have really fast, accurate, like, high AP guns, and they'll destroy pretty much any, like, recon vehicle, like a BRDM-3, for example. Uh, so I'm really happy to see some of those coming out. Yeah, they also have really high rate of fire, so they're superb for, like, destroying APCs, like, possibly even before infantry drops out, and that's one way you can kill some infantry with the HVMS. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We've got some Macava 2As. Uh, these are uh, the tanks that can bring in infantry, the only tanks in the game that can do that, um, which is uh, quite a powerful thing to have as an Israeli deck. Uh, then we've got the, a few units on the top side. We've got a couple of uh, like a recon squad with the infantry squad there, and the Zaklam. I'm assuming that has some the sort reserve. Of, yeah, reserve infantry inside. So. That's going to be interesting to see. Over on the other side of things, we're going to be seeing the uh, M84AN. <laughs> Basically, every Entente tech is going to be bringing in one of those at the start of the game, I would believe. We're also going to be seeing a newer at the start, and uh, MI17 and a Hera too. I, I kind of feel like a lot of Putin's units are quite expensive at the moment. They are, but that um, that newer MIT is ridiculous. Um, I think quite, quite a while ago we were having this discussion. Um... There was sort of the, the thing going around was that um, you just wanted to nerf the newer, the, you know, the, the seedless one, the one without the radar missiles. What they did was they reduced the range, but they also reduced the price from like 120 to 95 points, which was, I think that was a massive buff. So that is a really potent unit. But you're right, he is going to have to fill this out with a lot of cheap infantry now, because he's already spent a lot of his starting points. Yeah, and he's starting with two command units, I think. He's got an MI-17 with the command infantry, I think he's going to drop into Echo, and then one that's probably going to head to Charlie to get the plus two early. Whereas um, Captains is focusing on just having one command, as far as I can see, and investing the majority of his points into his initial pushes, which I think is generally a better way to go about things in, in a 1v1 especially. It can be, but these two pointers do give you a nice lead if you can take them and hold them. I'm a bit confused about captains using the Macava 2B up in the top side because I'm not really a fan of that. Really, it's um, I think in a situation for about the same price, you can get a Macava 2A which has the grenade launcher, or you can go and get yourself um, the name escapes me, but then the 70 point, the um, 
Magak, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, the Magak um, Gimel, yeah. Yeah, which is a really nice tank for the price. So yeah, and we got the the Tiran Blazers in the top side. Those are actually really nice uh, recon tanks, and he's going to be having one of those go around the top side to assist him, probably near Foxtrot. And then, so it, I guess in general, we're just going to see Captain's focus more on the Alpha to Bravo push because most of his uh, infantry is down the bottom side of Delta, and we're going to be seeing uh, like a few things, like an HGM squad. We've got the uh, Recon there and the heavier tank going to be trying to put some pressure on to golf from hotel. We're going to have to see what sort of uh, line Putin's going to take though since there isn't too much infantry down at the moment. And I kind of feel like, yeah, like he's invested so much in other units than, than infantry that he could lose a lot of ground early if he's not too careful, especially to the strong APCs of, of Israel. He could do, but I think his plan is really, I mean... We don't know yet, but I would assume from his positioning he's going to push golf through that forest, and that's what I—that's what I'd want to do if I were him, because, um, like when it comes to to Israel, they are, I think, undoubtedly the kings of forest fighting because of those macabers. It doesn't matter how good your infantry is or how good your transports are. Um, those macabers at close range, they'll even stun heavy tanks or super heavies uh, with the grenade launcher. So. If I were him, I would be pushing Golf across the open field where he can leverage a bit of advantage there. You know, with the kind of things like the Super Gleb and the um, his high-end recon tanks and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. Um, although he does have the OT, you know, 60 PBs, which if he buys a lot of them, they are relatively cheap with the, the infantry you can bring them in. Um, he could push quite hard into the forest areas as well. And I feel like that it's recoilless is like the recoilless should be able to do enough damage to some of the half tracks that Israel is going to be fielding in order to to make a difference there. So that that'll be interesting to see how those sort of APCs match up. Like for example, a Zelda versus an OTM 60 PB. Obviously, the OTM 60 PB can actually kill the Zelda, and a Zelda can't kill an OTM 60 PB. But I'm just talking in relative terms of of the infantry there as well. So we'll have, yeah. to, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, one thing to mention is, um, you mentioned that Putin did buy another CV. He did bring it in the MI-17, which is definitely the right choice, because that means that even though he's spending like 130 points, he's still getting a really useful combat vehicle out of it as well. Yeah, those 122mm rockets on those MI-17s are really, really strong. They can definitely do a lot of damage in the right places. Uh, he's also got one that's uh, covering golf already and is going to take out the uh, recon just before they get out of the vehicle but the Bedouins are going to survive that. The Hera 2 is engaging the Seifan. It would be really good if he could get the kill but Seifan's going to get away with one health there. He's got to be careful that he doesn't fly it over the other uh, APCs there as they will be able to take it down. Spatbov 3 gets on target though and takes the kill. I think we've been a little bit bamboozled here to be honest because Putin, he's not really doing anything that I'd expect. He's going for some kind of weird Sort of half assed push into here with these Padabranchi and the, the speciality. Um, he's got the forest in golf, but not in any mass amount of force, really. So I'm just interested to see if Captain can hold this off. Right? Yeah, the Rev 890 already jumping in on top of the speciality did not key. The Padabranchi are going to be uh, engaging the HVMSs with their Erex or Bumba missile system. They were trying to get shots onto the Makava 2s, but the Makava 2s moved out to the line of sight. And those Makava 2s, as soon as they get the frag uh, grenade launchers on target, well, uh, the speciality did not are going to not last very long. And I think, honestly, the Makavas there were dealing a lot of friendly fire, which was quite interesting. But Super Galeb going to come in, take out the Macbeth, actually. A really nice kill for the Super Galeb, because it basically means that it gets out for free, taking out the AA with those missiles. Panabranci, though, still very much alive and are taking shots at these Zeldas, but they are panicked and shaken, so they're going to be a little less combat effective. And the Rive 890s will move in there to reveal the Panabranci, and then I'm uh, assuming that Captain's going to move up the Makava 2As to uh, push them out of the sector. Yeah, a Baz coming in now to try and take down the 17k, and um, I'm not sure what Putin's really trying for that, because he's right over Captain's AA there. But, um, I mean, this oh. newer might take it out, though. Oh, second shot. That's going to miss. Oh, it just misses. Baz is going to get out alive, uh, but that new uh, basically showing how effective it can be. It took down that Baz to very low health. And here we go with the Macabre 2As engaging with the Pelebranci, but the mortars being used there, the Pram, 
going to be uh, providing the smoke support to cover the Padabranci as they demolish the Rove 90 squads. And this is actually really, really good for uh, Putin here because if he can take out the Rove 8s, he can basically uh, house hop forwards and backwards to try and get some shots onto these Macavas. I think Captain's realizes this. He's uh, reversing them back because he's in a very dangerous situation because that's a lot of points. That's um, 180 points worth of Macava 2s. Oh, one side shot. Was that? I think that actually just front. hit the front shot, yeah. But either way, took it down to half health, and that's only going to take one more missile to take out at least one of those Macavas. Super Galeb comes into the middle. Does that just take out the uh, Macava there? Yeah, it took out the yeah. Macava 2B. So, a nice another kill from the Super Galeb. Oh, those Macava 2As are being very lucky right now that this next missile might take one out. Yeah. Yeah, so the Padabranci really doing a, a good job there, taking out two squads of infantry, taking out one of the Merkava 2As. They've also taken out two HVMSs and uh, the Zeldas that were supporting the Rivet 90s that are now pushing into Bravo. But the Prime S is trying to uh, provide some mortifier onto these uh, Rivet 90 as they do take out the only infantry squad defending Bravo. And this is... I don't know, it's kind of put Putin in a difficult spot because if these Rovates uh, move up and, and take the roads, uh, it could be hard to push against. However, uh, the quality of infantry isn't actually that great with the Rovates and they don't have amazing AT weapons. So uh, some sort of uh, armoured support push there, maybe just bringing in some M84s or something would be enough to destroy those Rovates very quickly. Uh, Baz is flying about in the air and uh, we do see a little bit of movement around the top side of the map uh, not too much uh, to worry about there though for Putin just yet um, not really it's kind of interesting because Captain's got the small little force in the top but he's got nothing that can actually really deal with um... I mean, like if this blazer doesn't kill the T-55 then he's not really got anything going for him up there Dragon's taking shots at the M MI-35 on the bot side and MI-17's also coming up he's got to be careful that they don't get shot down by the uh, Dracon as well Pad of Brown C squads being taken down to uh, just one squad now. MI-17 is going to be engaging some Zeldas in the open. But yeah, like you were saying, uh, this Tiran Blazer really needs to do some work onto these T-55s. Otherwise, all of this, uh, all of these units invested into the top side here aren't going to be particularly useful. Uh, one of the Zeldas goes, does go down to the MI-17s there. The second one goes down as well to the 122mm uh, rocket pods. And the Rovates are left out in the open there uh, without their... APCs to cover them. Now we've got some uh, reinforcing infantry coming in to defend at Bravo. I don't think one squad of Proletari though is really going to be enough to uh, help with uh, the Rovates unless he uh, manages to get the last of the MI-17 rockets on target there. And he, what he might possibly do is wait until the Rovates uh, push to the edge of the cliff there and then he'll have line of sight into the forest and be able to take them out. But Captain's knows better and he's going to move away from uh, that engagement and pull back until he gets his own fire support into position. So Padabranci there, going to be uh, falling back, but some Zaklams uh, <laughs> running towards them very quickly. These are the uh, just half-tracks pushing those. Uh, MI-35 goes down the bop side to the Dracon as well. And yeah, I don't know, not too much really significant happening and no big exchange in terms of conquest points just yet, but Putin holding the lead with 64 conquest points. It's quite interesting really, because Putin does actually control Golf and Bravo, but it feels like he's on a really tenuous position even though he, he does have the advantage here. It's, um, I think really he's on captains because Putin can probably keep spamming stuff out here to the bottom side all day to try and mash against him, but if captains can break through, and especially I think if he can maybe do a quick cheeky attack into Golf, which, you know, all he needs is, what, some smoke and two infantry units and he can take it, really. Yeah, Although he's still going to be... Still going to be careful of the Super Galeb. Um, he does have the Baz out, and L18 is coming in to uh, challenge that, I would assume. So that engagement is going to be an interesting one to watch, because if he can take back control of the sky, the Super Galeb is going to be free to uh, kill any tanks that try and uh, move on golf. But as you were saying, Putin controls the majority of the map at the moment, but it it's very... Yeah, very tenuous because his units are pretty damn weak at the moment. I mean, he's got a proletary 90 squad, five man left control, uh, like holding Bravo. M84 AN's trying to make some ground uh, onto the top there, but it's going to be challenged by the Magak. 
On the bottom side of Alpha, the Padabranci aren't going to be along for this world. We do have some Miluim uh, coming in with uh, the Recordless Rifles there to challenge the Padabranci. I'm not entirely sure why those are being used. I, I don't know, we don't see them very often at all with the Israelis, do we? Um, not really, because to be honest, I don't know why you'd buy those when you could just buy buy the Robit 90s in the Zeldas for about the same price. Yeah, so I, I'm guessing they're like, like just the um, you know the reserve infantry, but there goes a big in air engagement. The Baz is actually gonna uh, survive there, and uh, the bombs was that some bombs came down, but the Baz is gonna go down to the newer as well. So, <laughs> wow. That's uh, went for Putin. So, captain's brought in a um, a Kurnas, and that went down to the ASF, and then the Baz killed the ASF, I think, and then the <laughs> the newer killed the Baz. So. Yeah, so Captain's losing out there, losing two of his planes to one. And that's interesting because it now allows that Super Galeb to do work again. However, the M84's dealt with the Magat quite nicely. The Dorban LR is going at the uh, M84 with its Spike LR into gems. Hobbit's managed to get onto the MI35 there briefly, but the MI35 might just move out of range in time. The Bazak's moving forwards with their red eye to try and get the uh, last shot onto the MI-35 but that red eye doesn't have much HE value at all so it the wouldn't have been enough to uh, kill off the MI-35 anyway. It's honestly terrible I don't know why you'd bother using it because you probably need about 10 of them to actually hit something. Um, I think you're much better off going up for the... Um... Ooh, check out the back, Special oh. Linden Noki getting into uh, the hat pack there and uh, that's going to be absolutely tragic if uh, Captains doesn't buy another command quick enough, especially on the Jadnoki sneaking all the way around the back. Well, that's just uh, done the job there. <laughs> As now what's going to happen is the Xarate is going to have to be pulled back from Hotel uh, towards Delta, and uh, the plus three is currently going in favour of Putin. It's not just a plus three as well. In such a tenuous position where both sides are kind of a little bit reeling, a little bit low. I mean, Putin does have a bit more in the front line now, but... That's a hundred points gone. The captain is going to have to buy because he can't. He can't set him at minus two uh, for any period of time. And Putin is really sort of establishing dominance, really. I think with that, because what that means now is he's got another hundred points to play with. The captains will have to purchase. Um, he can bring even more stuff up, and the captain is already really behind in alpha. And look so what's happened to the Exaret. <laughs> it's got detracked <laughs> for another minute, which is actually quite a big deal because that's quite a lot of points that are going to be ticking up. And he can't bring in another command until that Exaret gets into Delta. So this is just horrific at the moment. I can't imagine what is going through Captain's head. That must be so annoying moving through the forest there and getting an Exaret to track, even though it's like a tracked vehicle. <laughs> it's just, look at how, look so how close funny. to the edge that is. It's literally like about a meter away from the edge of the forest as well he got the track. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, the special effects that can happen in um, in Wargame. And, uh, and the whole time that this is happening, and the whole time that Delta is not captured by captains, uh, Putin's reinforcing the front line and is going to have consistently more troops available to fight than captains and captains just going to continue to lose more ground until he can bring in some reinforcements and this is longer than than a couple minutes that this Axaret's not doing too much and at the moment the Axaret's okay it's um just come back it's, it's managed to fix its track there in a in a minute record time and uh now he's now captain's trying to deal with especially dead not key in order to be able to bring in another command but this is absolutely <laughs> This is absolutely uh, critical to this game. That was a, a big old play there, taking out the command and, and that command just ruining uh, Captain's life there with the D-Track. So, yeah, I mean, not, not gone well at all. I think he's kind of, he's made himself known in Delta there, but... Yeah, I mean, a big thing as well that you have to think about is not only is it the, the points difference and the time difference, but there's also... The amount of time it takes to get from um, kind of Delta to Alpha. So in this amount of time, Putin's been bringing, he's been trickling units into Bravo and getting them all here. Captains is now going to have to wait for all these units he's spawning to get here, and Putin can take control of the sector before Captains can even get back here. Uh, I do have to question why Captains had his CV just sitting out in the open, especially an infantry CV. So a bit confusing. 
Yeah, he probably should have had it in one of the buildings at least so he could jump it away. But uh, there we go. Uh, mistakes were made and in this case it was a pretty damn big one as it <laughs> basically is, is handing the game to Putin right now. It, it's giving Captain so much work to do in, in taking back Alpha and then having to push through Bravo and as long as you know, Putin controls both Alpha and Bravo. There's not really much of a chance of um, captains coming back into this. The only way that I could see that captains might identify like a like a different move is rather than like push into Alpha and try and take back the ground that you've lost because of this command being annoying. Why not just try and go for something else? You know, you're, there, he's at such a disadvantage at this point. Maybe he could just try for that push into Golf and Foxtrot, right? Because there, we can see that there's not much there. Obviously, he doesn't know that because he doesn't have the recon information to show that there's only a Special in Jednoki and a T-55A really defending that. Um, but if he just went, went at it with any sort of force, he could possibly try and turn the map on its side and give him time to start defending from Delta which is significantly easier across that uh, open field from Alpha. So if he could take control of Foxtrot and Golf, he could just swing the, the map on its head. But still going to take time, and it's time he doesn't really have at the moment. He's got, well, he's got there's 25 minutes uh, left on the map. But he's got to be careful that Putin doesn't start investing in command since he's had the time to bring in all of the troops he needs. I, I do really think that this is a mistake a lot of people make, and even people like Captain's is a very experienced player. I think that he's just sitting here, he's building up his forces, and he's just going to mash against Putin and Alpha. And it's not any kind of like tactical play. It's just mashing back and forth and hoping that you can out-micro your opponent. And when you're this far behind in material, that's just you just can't do it. It, it would take a miracle for Putin to lose this battle in Alpha. And I think this is the time Captains needs to seize the initiative and just go for golf because he's not, you know, he's going to lose anyway if he doesn't. He's not going to retake Alpha. Yeah, not in it, not in like the time he needs to get a conquest lead anyway. And the command now has come into Voxtrot, so the plus one is putting a timer onto uh, Captains at this point. Of it is going to be stunned in the bottom side by an MI17 there. MI17 might actually be able to take out that AA unless the AA gets on target first, which it likely does. That's going to go down. So the Hobbit's uh, yeah, done its work there. The Tyran is trying to get rid of the Special and Jednoki, but there's just too many uh, units here uh, at this point uh, to really you know, make back the ground quick enough in order to win, let alone draw the game. So yeah, it's really not looking great at the moment. And Xarit is actually being brought up by captains. He's investing in a command unit where is he going to put it? He just lost all of his units in Alpha. So This is just the worst thing you can do, I think, in this situation. People do this sort of snap reaction where, like, oh, I'm behind this, this is plus one, I've got a bit of a hold, I need to bring a CV in. No, you do not need to bring a CV in. You need to retake Alpha first, or take Golf, or whatever you want to do. Yeah, now there's just a bunch of Proletarian 90 in the way, and uh, they're going to be more than enough to deal with these uh, Shermans coming into the... Boris as well, and the Xerit's really not going to have much of a chance of uh, sitting in the corner of Alpha there without basically telling Putin where it is. Because as soon as Alpha comes under the control of Captains, there's only one place he could have put that command. And I'm pretty sure that Putin can, can try and focus it down, or at least try and get some rec on it to maybe use a Super Galeb or something. Uh, this Baz is obviously still flying about, and that will require the investment in possibly an L18 or uh, moving up the newers further, but either way, uh, plus two now for Putin as he has started that investment in command vehicles since his position is so strong in Alpha right now. I mean, just one thing to note as well if you just quickly switch over to Captain's view to Dave Davies' view, just look at this recon tank, this uh, M84AM, just killing all these units. Captain's has no vision on it. I say that and I guess a vision, but yeah, it flicks out again and he's done so much damage to these macabres because. They just see a shot come out and then, it, oh, the proletary kill off the CV. Yeah. That has to sting. That has to sting so much. Well, that's pretty much game because he's just invested in that that command and he's just let it get killed there. I don't know why you would move it towards Alpha without having anything there already. Um, the Kurnas getting out alive there, dealing some damage, but not too much. 
But the, yeah, you're right about this M84. It's literally been popping uh, APCs and infantry in the open and pretty much just single handedly destroyed captains pushed out from hotel to alpha. And all of those points could have been easily invested to find out if there's anything in Gulf. He's even got like the Bedouins uh, up there now uh, moving towards Gulf. And maybe he'll find out now that there's only Special Army Dead Notki there. But. It's just too late. There's, it's like plus two, and it's 300 points to Putin. He's, he's got to do a lot of work to make back the ground into initially Alpha, then stop the uh, command capping uh, Foxtrot and Bravo. And he can't get a command into uh, like Alpha since he just lost it to a proletary squad. And now he has the Rovates there with the Zeldas, but it's just too late like he should have had those there before he moved the uh, command in and he didn't and on a proletary 90 getting the uh, the kill is just yeah devastating i mean the thing is as well even if he somehow miraculously took back alpha which isn't going to happen then he'd have to take bravo as well and then he'd only be even with putin because putin is still controlled golf yeah he'd have to go all the way through to charlie if he wanted to win this game i, I mean obviously i think this is definitely over by now um but yeah, some mistakes were made by Curtains, I think. It's, um, I mean, I think one of the big things as well is those Macavers didn't really get the chance to, to fight to their strengths because instead of fighting in Forest, they were they were fighting at long range from the back Forest and Alpha. Yeah. And then once the sort of better tanks from... Because um, at the end of the day, the, the Macava 2A is not very good as a tank compared to, like, an M84. Um... And that's really the end of it, to be honest. And these, these poor Rovi 90s getting stunned by the proletaries as well. There's nothing going in uh, Captain's favour at the moment. And even if he took back uh, Golf and Voxtra at this point, then he wouldn't have control over Bravo. And again, it would still be uh, like neutral in terms of uh, conquest points. So it's just there was absolutely no way. Like even if he necessarily made that push into Golf and Voxtra, all that would do is like buy him time in order to figure out how he wants to combat the rest of the map. Uh, it wouldn't have actually won in the game. So when we were talking about that earlier, it was only a, a way to really uh, circumnavigate like even, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the units in Alpha. But either way, after 19 minutes and 55 seconds, uh, Captain's going to surrender to Putin, and Putin's going to win the game. So uh, pretty likely outcome there after that command play, and I pretty, I'm pretty sure that pretty that set the tone of the game uh, after that happened, um, Putin getting a lot of kills, 1,810 kills to 1,060 losses. What did you think of that, Val? I think this is like a prime example of, um, you know, I, I feel bad for captains for this, but of what not to do when you're losing a sector, I think. <laughs> because, I mean, obviously it might have been a bit easier for him if he hadn't have lost that CV. Uh, I mean, there, there's another one. Don't put your CV, your infantry CV, out in the open, just in a random field. Um, yeah, just very strange. Um, and then sort of just trying to trying to mash his head against Putin in Alpha. He was almost like on a conceptual level. I don't think he was ever going to come back in that game just because of the way he was trying to play it. Yeah, I think in general it's just like those mistakes um, sort of built up and he lacked the foresight to really try and push in other sectors where... Um, but, I mean, he must have had some idea that, that there was a lot of investment going into Alpha. So that would give you the idea that the other sectors are less defended. I hope you went back and watched the replay and realised this, because it's really something that, you know, it's, it's the classic war game syndrome, isn't it, that we always talk about, where people um, assume there to be more than there is, and they don't take advantage of... Uh, you know certain situations like if they get ahead they could probably get more ahead because they've already destroyed the majority of the stuff right and just other situations like that that happen war happen in war game where you just um overestimate uh, your opponent and the sort of units they have in certain locations in this case um yeah that speciality did not key mvp comes around the back and takes out the cv the Axaret um <laughs> really letting captains down with that d track which was crazy honestly and that basically uh, put the last nail in the coffin for uh, captains, I feel. I mean, let's not be around the bush. That was a little bit tragic, I think. Uh, that Axarit <laughs> CV, it, it was just... Imagine how sort of tilted captains was when he went from being a little bit behind, kind of, you know, he's being pushed out of Alpha, it's not going very well. And then you suddenly see a squad come and kill your CV, and then your CV gets the track trying to go back to the sector. 
That is just the worst thing that could happen, I think. Yeah, so anything else to say? Um, not really. I think it was a bit of a, a masterclass on how not to come back. Um, and, I mean, kudos to Putin. He played a very strong standard sort of game. And um, one of the things that he did do that was very nice was he saw that golf was kind of not being contested by captains. So he moved everything out of there. There was one squad of Janotsky there. And he moved his M84A and he moved some of his Padabranchi and brought them into golf because that's where he needed them. Not golf, sorry, uh, Bravo. And um, really playing on the sort of war game mindset where you think there's more than there is. Yeah, so that's especially only Jed Notkey just at the end of the day, just being an early warning system with that recon of it, uh, like available there uh, to show him if anything's going to actually push on to that sector. But either way, um, yeah, Putin's going to be moving on to the next round. And unfortunately, Captains is knocked out of the tournament. So that's all we have for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. And just remember to take it easy.